Glad you showed up. We could use the help, Vic. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, we're going to take a look at the Felix Toys 112th scale collectible figure, the Ink Blot. Robo's Journal. It was a good day to check the mailbox. Because this thing apparently decided to make a trip around the world or the country or floating around in the post office. I, I don't know where it's been, but I have it now. I don't think I've ever bought a 112th scale Rorschach or any compatible scale. It's larger. I think Diamond Select did some. Mattel did some. DC Direct, maybe. I've never got one. But when I saw this up for pre-order... I had to get it. Looking at the package, it's pretty simple. It's a third party unlicensed. That's why it's called the ink blot. So there's not going to be any copyright and everything else. Just Rorschach on the front holding a card that is embossed and shiny. The design itself isn't raised, it's just the edge of the card. On the side, the ink blot on back. Warning, choking hazard. Don't put them in your mouth. On the other side, the ink blot. I have to double check to make sure it's not the same side. On top, Felix Toys. On bottom, same thing. Let's see what's going on here. I was gonna do a, you're locked in here with me joke, but it's gonna get old real quick, huh? What's this? Interesting. Double tray, extra stuff, so much stuff. Oh, and I like that there's a foam pad right here just to keep it in place from shaking around. Get out there with and damn, Felix Toys went hard with this thing. There was a time when you thought third party, you'd think, oh, well, it's not gonna be very durable. It's gonna look oddball in places, poor quality, but those days are long gone. Some of these third party companies are just killing it. It's very hard to get fabric to look good at 112th scale and it's never perfect. Even the best, you can still tell the seams and the textures, they look out of place whenever you get up close. But here, it's one of the better ones I've seen. At least material wise, stitches, yeah, that's always gonna look big, but this still looks fantastic. These are plastic buttons on the front of the jacket. There's actual working pockets. It's a bit hard to get in there without pulling on things and getting it around and trying to get it, but you can get, oh, there you go, look at that hand in the pocket. At this scale, I don't like taking cloth goods off because I find it very, very frustrating to try to get it back the exact way it came packed. Like if I were to take this ascot off, it looks like it goes all the way down. Yeah, it's a separate piece. There's a shirt underneath. I can never get it back to looking like this. So I usually just leave it. There's the shirt, there's the jacket, but this doesn't look overly bulky. It looks like a regular guy wearing a trench coat. Then down on the pants, the pinstraps. Oh, that's so well done. There's even a fly sewn in and the jacket has Velcro, but again, I don't like messing with that. It looks good now. I don't want to push my luck. The shoes are a plastic piece, which I like because it gives it a solid base to stand on. It's not kind of flexing around and there are socks under there. And it looks like the shirt underneath is also long sleeve, comes all the way down. Look at the fade from lighter to dark, giving it a worn leather look. Ooh, so pretty. Same thing for the hands. The plastic gives it a leathery sheen. It's not high gloss. It just has a slight shine to it. And then some wear and tear because yeah, Rorschach likes to use fists. The belt tied on the side, these are wired. So you can get those going back if he's full on running or flowing in the wind on a rooftop. Oh, just make it as dynamic as you want. On the back, just some seams and some dirtiness. There's some light, there's some dark. Ooh, even have buttons on the back of the cuffs. But look at this craziness, I mean, some major toy companies can't give us likenesses this good. The blood, the stubble, the skin looks so realistic. And then for the hair, a nice wash, beautiful sculpt. You can just see it in his eyes. He wants his face back. Give me back my face! This is where I usually go into engineering, which means body and articulation. Again, I'm not gonna take these clothes off, but as I've moved this around and posed it, it's hindered like we usually see with a figure that's covered completely in cloth. When you move it around, it's gonna pull back. It's gonna bunch up. It's gonna get in the way, but it's still pretty damn impressive for, again, a, a third party figure. You can't get him crouched down like he's on the rooftop looking down on the street, but I mean, look at that ankle. That is amazing. And I haven't had any problems except for the wrist. Whenever you pull the hands off, which are tight right out of the package, I've actually taken a Phillips head screwdriver and kind of wallowed out the hole just slightly 
to make it easier to pop on and off. But we've seen this with other figures where it's an angle to the hinge right there. And I, I don't know if it makes it more dynamic or what, but if you try to pull straight, you're putting all the stress on that peg that is going through between those two halves of the hinge. So you wanna pull back with that angle and then kind of work it off the peg. Twice I've pulled straight and the two halves came apart. And because of how this is recessed in there, you can't just pop it back on. You can see it goes behind. So I had to heat up the arm, pull out the rest of the assembly, put it back together, and then shove it back in. As long as I'm mindful with the angle, I haven't had a problem since. Going over the rest of the articulation, the bottom of the neck has a ball joint, but there's a lot of collar. There's a lot of stuff going around. Up about there, kind of kicks forward. Down is nice, but still, little kick. Oh, so much tilt. Left and right. Feels like there's a butterfly joint under there, forward, back. Well, maybe it's something else because it drops up and down too. That rotates around. Like I said, the jacket bunches up. You can go straight up though. Arm hinges out. Feels like there's a bicep swivel under there. Double elbow, feels like it goes there and then the other one kicks in. You can go pretty much all the way. Swivel hinge, swivel at the wrist, up and down. Rotate it inside the arm to go side to side, whichever direction you wanna go. Not sure what's going on with the torso. Again, I'm not looking under there. Not a whole bunch of crunch. Some arc back, some tilt, some rotation. Something coming out to the hip gets you to there. The Pants kind of bunch up on you. Back out. <laughs> Still better than some Spider-Man. I'm not feeling a thigh swivel of any kind. Knee. Oh, damn close to kicking in his own ass. And then dumbbell joint at the ankle. You can shift it forward and back a bit. That gives you rotation here. Back, forward. Quite a bit of rocker. And then for accessories, we're going to go for the heads first this time. There is the beautifully done Jackie Earl Haley likeness. And then there are three different versions of the Rorschach mask. There is this one that looks like two people running through a field. This one that seems to be some kind of conflict. Is he mad at the other one? And then lastly, this one that looks like a mask of some kind. I thought this one would be my favorite because it looks the most like eyes, nose, and mouth, you know? But I'm actually digging this one for some reason. And like I showed, that just pops off the bottom. You take another and put it right on there. Not a problem at all. And then with the mask, of course, you have to have the fedora. It's made out of plastic, slightly soft. I like that the sheen matches the gloves and the boots. What I like most is how well it fits these heads. You put it on there, it stays. It's on there. You can even have it up a bit, down a bit, side side it, it fits all around and that completes the look just overall this is rorschach this is the one i've been waiting for for hands of course there's fists but there's also relaxed hands there's grip hands and then there's a set of hands with a right trigger finger and a left holding smaller objects Hand. And again, going back, make sure you pull with the angle of that cut. And it's just a simple matter of, you know, plugging on one of the other hands. Let's go for the grapple gun first because it, it has the most frustration involved. In the package, you get this and you automatically think, well, that's not complete. That is because there are add-on parts for the barrel and it only goes a certain way. You have to turn it that way. And that looks good with the golds and the silvers and the brown on the handle. And the reason they made it swappable is to take this out, put another barrel on, and that has a hole in the end to make the grapple look like it's shooting out. There's this tiny piece of wire that you have to thread into that tiny little hole. I feel like when I got this out of the package, this was a tighter fit because now, I don't know if the hole's slightly bigger from me doing this a couple times or <laughs> me fumbling around, poking at it, but it just kind of flops around in there. It's a good effect but you can see it, it's just loose. The reason they did that is because there's also a longer piece of wire. With this, it's essentially the same problem. You thread it in there and this end is loose. And because this is longer, it's even more floppy. It kind of rotates to where it's gonna hang down and looks like, oh, well, shit. Looks like it's a weak Nerf gun, you know? <laughs> you can work with it, especially at certain angles for pictures and stuff. Get it turned around, maybe. Comes with a tiny, tiny rose that is actually very nice for its size. Comes with a meat cleaver with some slight blood on the blade. I know I'm weird for this kind of thing, but my favorite are these screws being painted in the handle. That just sets it off. Oh, and it even has the middle of the handle where it's sandwiched together. Comes with the smiley face button with a blood drop on it. This is just iconic Watchmen. And they could have stopped just there, but they also made the other side look like 
it actually has a pin on it. That is some detail. Rorschach's journal. Just like the boots and the hat and the gloves, it, the plastic looks very leathery. But I think my favorite accessory is the can of hairspray and the Zippo. Hairspray for men. Super hold. I just like a good flame effect, and this is a good flame effect. This looks so good. Even just standing here, this figure has a presence. The ink blot stands at about six and a half inches to the top of the hat, which is taller than the Felix Toys Clown and the Bullet Head Criminal, I think it is. Seems they wanted to get it more into Mezco 112th collective territory. But that's weird to me because this is very movie inspired. Isn't the actor fairly short? But if you're looking for just a Rorschach, yeah, this will fit in with quite a few other lines. Like with your Mezco Batmans and Jokers, but not so much your Moffex cinematic figures. Oh, not bad with the later Mattel multiverse figures, though. But as always, here is the Hasbro Star Wars Black Series first version of the Stormtrooper and Hasbro Marvel Legends comic book Black Panther. So at the end of the day, I finally have my Rorschach. Like I mentioned way back, I've never had any other version of this, but I've always wanted a Rorschach for the collection, and here we are. I never need another Rorschach again. This is my end-all, be-all Rorschach. How many times can I say Rorschach without making it sound weird? This does everything I needed to do, and sure, it has an issue or two, but everything else more than makes up for that. Consider me happy, and you know me, I really, really like being happy. In fact, I predict sometime in the future, several years from now, somebody will ask, hey, you've had this Rorschach for a while, do you need a new one? And I'll whisper, no. If you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. Now, which one am I gonna use on display? Because really, this unmasked head is so good that I hate to put it in a bag, off in a box, store it away. I guess maybe rotate every so often on the shelf. Everything here is so good. I know I keep saying that, but I can't help it. This thing is fantastic. It just works. It's like a little human in your hands.